Gabriel, straighten your hat. What a mess. And Sarah, must we go so fast? Heather's feeling poorly. I told you, we have to get to Virginia City before the auction. Heather, dear, we'll be there soon. Lorraine, put your dress down. Your limbs are showing. Don't do this at the new stage. Must be some kind of emergency. Toothers don't normally go that fast. Get up! Get up! Get up! soon, and I do not want the Lowell girls to look like a bunch of dance hall tramps. <laughs> You ladies all right in there? Wheel. Well, I've never heard of such a thing. How long is it going to take to fix this carelessness? Don't you worry, Nana. I'll get it fixed just as soon as I can. You don't seem to understand. I must be in Virginia City before noon. I told you that. Well, I was driving too fast in the first place to get you there ahead of schedule when this dang wheel busted. Sarah, we must be thankful. The Lord was merciful. You all right, ma'am? I must get to Virginia City by noon. How much will you charge to convey Well, we're going that way, ma'am. I'm Ben Carter. How much? Oh, well, there won't be any charge, ma'am. We're going that way. I'm upon paying. I'll make it a fair price. And meanwhile, it's my sister's and the luggage. Young man, you get up there and get that luggage down. Driver, untie please. Are you all right now? Yes. All right. Here we are. Please hurry. We'll all be fine now. There you are, ma'am. All right, now, come on over here. Here, give me a hand with that. Hey, you watch it, Ben. All right. Watch a big one here, Hawk. Oh, he's heavy now. Everything all right? Young man, will you stop fidgeting and get aboard? Oh. You're making me lose time. Ma'am, I think I'll uh, just ride on in with Tucson's ball after we get that wheel fixed. Yeah, well, as you wish, make up your mind. Drive on, but drive carefully. We don't have time to be picking up baggage all the way. Yes, ma'am. See you later, Hoss. How long them gals are gonna be around Virginia City, but I'll tell you one thing. As long as that female Sergeant Major are around, things ain't gonna be the same. <laughs> office right over there, ma'am. Oh, apparently we're in time. I'll take your sisters back to the hotel. Thank you, sir. Gabrielle, you register for us. And keep in mind that we do not need the most expensive suite. Lorraine, you look after Heather. I shan't be long. And please, remember who you are and act accordingly.
sir. Yes, ma'am? Are you in charge here? Well, that all depends, ma'am. What of? I'm referring to the auction. No, ma'am, that'll be our Mr. Billings there, the red-headed fella. Thank you. Yes. My dear sir, I understand you're in charge here. In charge of what, ma'am? Of the auction. What else? Oh, nothing else, ma'am. Only the auction. I'm Miss Sarah Lowell of Boston, Massachusetts. I'm here to inquire if property belonging to me and my sisters is to be auctioned off here today. Of course it is. Delinquent taxes. Now, wasn't that that property your uncle left you a short while ago? Well, the law requires... I wrote you as soon as I received the sales notice. And I told you that my sisters and I would be out here to operate the property. I ask you to please not sell it until we arrived. You didn't acknowledge that letter. Why? Didn't ever get no such letter. You didn't get it. I wrote it two days after the sale notice appeared. That was almost a month ago. Well, we're here now. I suggest you strike the property from the sales list. You mean you got the money to pay all them back taxes and charges? In my letter, I ask for a, a certain amount of time. Well, the law plainly says that all those taxes have got to be paid before auction time today. Now, if you ain't got all the money, that Lancaster place goes on the block. But I've come all the way from Boston, Massachusetts, just to prevent that from happening. I have a thousand dollars. I'll pay you the rest as soon as our home in Boston is sold. Miss Lowell, I got to get the auction going. You can't sell it right out from under us like that. It's all we have. It's our property. We don't even have enough money to return east on. I don't have nothing to do with that lady. My hands are tied. Please. Listen to me a moment. Excuse me, Miss, Miss uh, Lowell, but the, the sister at the hotel asked me to come by and tell you that Miss Heather, well, she was... Miss Heather? What happened? Well, they sent for the doctor, so she... The fainted. doctor? Well, she fainted, probably from exhaustion, you know, but she was fine... Please, you must wait. You must wait. My sister is ill. I I'll be back. This is about uh, taxes. How come you, uh, you can't let them wait a bit? Gone too long already, Mr. Cartwright. They either got to pay all the taxes or that place goes on the block. Well, wait a minute now, Billy. Hold on now. You got $1,000. How much do they owe? About $2,800. $2,800? Well, that's ridiculous. Never heard of land around here being more than two, three hundred dollars a year in taxes. That's ten times that much. Sorry, Mr. Cartwright. I got to get to the sales. Will you please keep still now? All I want to know is how come they owe that much. Oh, Mr. Lancastle got behind before he died. What, ten years behind? Now, come on. Now, you got to give him a chance. Billing should have been started by now. It's five after. Watch your blood pressure, Nate. We've got a lot riding on this, you know. What's the matter? What's holding things up out there? They're here. Who's here? Them, them Lowell sisters, all the way from Boston. How could they be here? The stage never came in. I don't know how. All I know is that one of them came in and tried to stop me from selling the place not more than ten minutes ago. They bring the money? Not all of it. Then start the sale and get it over with. But what if... What if what? We gotta have that property. We got 500 head of cattle on the way in right now. It ain't only those women anymore. Ben Cartwright's got his nose in on it now, too. Cartwright? What's he got to do with the Lancaster place? Never mind. Those cattle will be here in a week, and we've got to keep that box canyon available. You get out there and get that sale started just like nothing that happens, you hear? And remember, you've got the law on your side. But if anybody looks at them records too, too close, there ain't anybody gonna look at those records. Now get out and do what you're told. I'll do it. One slip, little man. Just one slip. Billings. Remember, five thousand's the limit on that place. You see, we get it. You'll. You'll get it. I left old Toothless over at the blacksmith shop. Them high flute ladies have a nice ride in the carriage. Boss, what do you know about the Lancaster place? Huh? 
What's important? What do you know about the Lancaster place? Well, it's about four sections in all. There's two of them that are good bottom land. There's a couple of sections. The rest of it's all good top grazing. A little river runs through it. Some pretty rough canyons. Why? What about buildings? Reckon as good as you want. There's a good main house, and then... What's all this about in here? All right, folks. The auction's ready to begin. First piece of property up for sale is the old Lancaster place. Now, you've got the description, about 2,500 acres. Back taxes and costs come to $2,781.76. Now, do I hear a bid? $2,900. $2,900, I got a bid of $2,900 high, and I make it a half. $3,250. For the Lancaster place? It's worth five times that. $3,250's bid. $4,000. $4,000, I got a bit of $40,000. Uh, $4,200, US money. $4,200 is bad. We must fall back on our faith, Sarah. Surely something will happen. I got a bit of $4,200. $4,200, who wants to raise $4,200? $4,500. Guess that closes the bidding. $4,750. Right. $4,750 is the bid. Care to raise it, Mr. Catlin? $5,000. No other beds. I declare the property goes to... Billings. Will you close out the bidding? A couple of questions I'd like to ask. Mr. Cartwright, we, we've got an auction to finish here. Now, this uh, property that you have for sale on the block... Uh, if the owners pay the back taxes before it's sold, they, uh, they get to keep it, don't they? Why, sure, but the owners are here and they can't pay. Now, as I was saying, I declare this property goes Please. to... In the name of the owners, I'll pay the taxes. Hold it, Lou. We got the winning bid. He's got no right to do that. Not now, you fool. Quiet! Quiet down! Quiet now! Now, it seems to me... Here's that... a check. I can't take this, Mr. Cartwright. You ain't a Lowell. Well, I'm acting for the Lowells. Well, uh, I don't know. I... Uh, the law... Now, look, Mr. Billings, you know very well that I helped draft the tax laws for this territory. If you want to debate them with me, I'm ready to hear what you have to say. I... Uh, no, sir, I... Well, that's fine. We'll just take this deed and mark it paid in four. Will you please tell me why you're doing this? What do you hope to gain? I don't expect to gain anything, Sloan. Bless you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, the Lord will surely bless Gabrielle, you. Gabrielle, please. This is not a Sunday school meeting. I apologize for not recognizing your prominence when we first met. You're obviously quite a power in this town. But I can't help standing here wondering just why you're taking this action. Most well, the Lancaster place is one of the finest properties around here. Well, let's just say I couldn't stand by and see it go at 10 cents on the dollar. You could have bid on it yourself. I don't need it, Miss Lowell. You do. He was trying to help, Sarah. Why were you so cold to him? You fellas in South Bastion a little later on. I'm going to town to see the Lowell's. All right. How come you loaned them all that money, anyway? Well, a couple of reasons, I guess. One of the Lowell gals kind of sickly. But more importantly, now, Uncle Reed Lancastle sure helped me out a lot when I was starting this place. Oh, the Lowell's don't know much about ranching. All the more reason to help them. I just don't think women can run a ranch, especially Boston women. Son, you haven't met Sarah Lowell yet. Woman could run anything she set her mind to. 
Welcome to the Ponderosa, Miss Lowell. Well, how nice to see you. Oh, you, you've uh, met my son, Hoss. Ladies? And my other son, Joseph. This Howdy is not me. a social call, Mr. Cartwright. I have uh, drawn a promissory note in your favor, and I've secured it with a trust deed. Now, I believe you'll find everything in order. I trust you'll find the terms satisfactory. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Miss Lowell, uh, I've just had some cool lemonade prepared, wouldn't you? It's a nice... Uh, Joseph, will you get the lemonade, please? Yeah, sure. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a long, hot ride Isn't back into town. Isn't that a nice invitation, sir? I'd love a cool glass of lemonade. Oh, it'd be nice and refreshing. We are no longer living in town, Mr. Cartwright. We moved to our new home this morning, and we uh, must get back. Uh, I, I didn't realize you'd already moved up to the ranch. I thought Miss Heather was so ill. Our sister is much improved, thank you. Lorraine, we have a full day's work ahead of us. But, Sarah, Mr. Cartwright has already sent for the lemonade. Mammy will be here in just a jiffy. Lorraine, please get right up here. I'm sure the gentleman will excuse us. Uh, Miss Lowell, is there something we can do to no, help you? No, thank you. We're quite capable of managing for ourselves. Thank you. Well, Miss Lowell, it seems to Lorraine? me that... Lorraine? Well, it's not necessary to... that down and rest a while. Well, Sarah, I'm just trying to help. Well, you'll do that nicely, dear, by regaining your health. Well, but, but I really feel good. I mean, I haven't felt this well in years. Well, don't be a martyr about it, dear. Lie back and rest a while. Lorraine, would you finish beating that rug? I'm going to get dinner on. Morning. Oh. Hello, Sheriff. How do you do? I just dropped by to see how your ladies was getting along. Only looking out for your welfare, you understand? It is the law's job to protect you. Well, Sheriff, you can rest assured if we need any help, we'll be sure and call on you. All right. Uh, you ladies do have a gun on the premises, do you not? A gun? Well, maybe I should ask, do any of you ladies know how to handle a gun? No, Sheriff. We're from Boston. That's civilized there. Has been for a good long while. Well, you're a good long ways from Boston right now, ma'am. And it might be a good idea if you get yourselves a gun, just in case. The Ten Commandments say, Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, but there's a lots of mountain lions around here from time to time. Well, we're not hunters, Sheriff. We're trying to establish a home here, not a menagerie. Thank you, ma'am. But if you do need any help in a hurry, you can always call on Ben Cartwright and his boys. They're around here everywhere. You mean the Cartwright Ranch surrounds us? Well, practically. Uh, your strip of land kind of cuts into Ponderosa like a... Small finger pointing down in the north. Well, I better be getting back to town. Good day, ladies. So that's why Ben Cartwright was so generous. What do you mean, Sarah? I mean, his ranch practically surrounds us. He holds our note. If we can't pay it off, he can foreclose and get our ranch for less than $3,000. And all his talk about Western neighborliness and friendship. Lorraine! I said to beat the rug, don't destroy it!
got company, Catlin. What are you two doing here? I thought you were with the herd. Smokey sent us along ahead to make sure everything's all right. It's a good thing he did, too. What do you mean by that? He means those cattle will be arriving in two more days, so you better have that box canyon ready, Catlin, and fast. I've never let you boys down yet, so don't start worrying now. If you'd have let me say something at that auction. And alert the whole town by starting a fracas with the card rights. Smokey and the others ain't gonna like this hang-up. Not after fighting sheriffs and ranchers all the way from Montana. They're counting on you two to handle them cattle, same as always. There's near 500 head just in that first bunch alone. I've handled your stolen herds for years and made money for all of us. I told you I'd hide this bunch until the trail cools. And that's exactly what I intend to do. No, where are you going to put them? Under your hat? Listen, we need that canyon. We need it now. I say if those Boston females are in our way, let's kill them. That's what I say, Captain. Well, I say no. I've stayed in business a long time, but not by acting like a fool. There are other ways of getting rid of those women. Like what? Like using our brains. It seems to me that it shouldn't be too difficult to take care of four little lambs from Boston. Boston. We'll give them an old-fashioned Boston tea party. Yeah. We'll scare them half to death. Run them right out of the country and nobody will ever be the wiser. I love it out here, Lorraine. You know, I've felt so much better just since we've come here. Oh, we're all glad to see you happy again, Heather. I just wish Sarah would give me a chance. Have you seen Gabrielle anywhere? I've been looking all over for her. She's probably up in her room reading the Bible. Are you all right, dear? Oh, I'm fine, Sarah. Well, now, as soon as you're finished there, you lie down and conserve your strength. Yes, Sarah. She still treats me as if I were a three-year-old child. She doesn't mean to, Heather. It, it's just that, well, I suppose she's so used to taking care of us, it's just become a habit with her. Heather, do this. Gabrielle, do that. And Lorraine, beat the rug. Don't destroy it. Oh, and the way she treats other people, like the Cartwrights. I mean, they're only trying to be nice to us, Lorraine. And I felt so sorry for that poor share of coffee this afternoon. You know, did it ever occur to you that that might be Sarah's way of expressing her love? Love? By acting like a bossy old stepmother? No. By giving us the security she herself never had. By protecting us from the outside world and... Well, even to the extent of being unpopular with other people and unhappy. Unhappy? Sarah? Well, why do you think she gave up the life she loved in Boston? To sell everything and move out here to this strange environment? I just thought she felt we'd have a better chance here. Heather. She did it because of me, didn't she? Oh, Sarah loves us. In her own way, she's given herself to us always. Since we were children. I know. You know, she was little more than a child herself when father and mother died. And in that accident. But you were just a little baby and you wouldn't remember anything of that. Well, you're not the only one indebted to her. We all are. Why, we're the only family she'll ever have. Oh, Lorraine, I'm so sorry. we better finish the dishes before Sarah gets back. You know what she'll do. <laughs> Come on, we've 
What is it? This was no accident. What do you mean? I mean that bottle had kerosene in it. That rag was stuck in it. It was lit and thrown in here. You mean this fire was... Arson. Deliberate arson. Who would do such a thing? Not even the devil could be so cruel. I think I know who did. And he may well be the devil. Roy, if that fire was set, then someone is after the lower place. I can't figure out why. Just can't seem to put my finger on it. Miss Sarah Lowell thinks she has put her finger on it. She claims that you're trying to scare them off their ranch so as you can get it for your mortgage. Oh, she does. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> that Miss Sarah Lowell, she's sure an orderly woman, isn't she? Likes everything neat and tidy under a nice big heading. And the trouble is, her headings are all wrong. But what's the right heading? I don't know, Roy. Sure wish I did. But I know there's an answer somewhere. I'm going to try to find it. Yeah, they're harsh and little Joe with the supplies. I'll see you later, Roy. Let's go over to the courthouse and check the tax records in the Lancaster place. Go back five or ten years, will you? Yeah. Joe, as soon as we get these supplies back, I'd like you to go over every inch of the lower place. Somebody wants that place so bad, I want to find out why. Good. Cattle tracks. It's branding iron. Campsite not too old. And it's, it's carving. That carving's just like the one that Catlin's partner had that day at the auction. What'd you find? Well, I, I found that old Reed Lancaster was delinquent in his taxes, all right. But only in the last year before he died. Those taxes had been increased nine times more than anybody else paid for land that same size. I tell you, boy, it looked to me like those figures had been changed. I mean, it looked like they'd been smudged or something. I get it. Hey, Roy, come hey, on in, Joe. Ben? Arthur? Roy? Well, I'm glad to see you. We were coming out to have a talk with you. What brings you out here? Well, I just come out to ask Joe a question. That what? Were you riding around the Lowell sisters' place today? 
Yeah. Then I got to arrest you. Well, what for? I sent him out there. Heather Lowell took pretty sick late this afternoon. The doc was there, and he said that he found their well polluted. Well, what are you saying? Do you think I polluted the well? Joe, I've known you since you were that high. I know that you couldn't possibly do anything like that. Well, then what are you talking about? Miss Sarah Lowell signed a formal complaint. And with Joe admitting that he was on their land, I have no choice. I've got to take him in. That's the law. Oh, that woman. Heather is a pretty sick girl. I understand that she's never been too strong anyhow, and the doc says that she might die. Seat, ben. I'll release him in your custody until the trial. I'll go get little Joe. You know, Paul Roy's really taking this serious, ain't he? Uh, you know, Roy, letter of the law caught me. What is he doing out here, Sheriff? Why isn't he in a cell in chains? He's been bailed out, ma'am. And we don't use chains no more. But he's responsible for poisoning our well. Miss Lowell, please be reasonable. Reasonable? With a would-be murderer? Miss Lowell, I'm sure that even back in Boston, a man is entitled to his freedom under proper bond. Very well, Sheriff. I see what civil protection consists of here. I shall set my own house in order without recourse to your so-called law. Please try to understand my sister. Gabrielle and I don't think you're behind this. It, it's just that Sarah's upset over Heather. I should like to purchase four guns with suitable ammunition, please. What was that again, ma'am? Four guns with ammunition, sir. Sarah, what are you doing? My dear. Boston is behind us. This is the uncivilized West. We must arm ourselves to meet it on its own terms. Well, come on in, ladies, and uh, take your pick. I wish that Sarah was as sweet as that sister of hers, Lorraine. Well, I think the time has come to have a talk with that woman, a real talk. Yeah, I think you'd have more luck talking on mule. Well, just the same, before things get any worse, I'd like to ease her mind. Yeah, how are you figuring on doing that? Well, I see you and I could ride out over there and have a nice, pleasant talk with her, that's all. No way up, man. I'll get my horse and go with you. No, no, you've been through enough today. The only place you're going, young fella, is home. Tried alone, Gabrielle. Afternoon, ladies. Uh, be of some help to you, Miss Lowell. Oh, thank you. Let me get that thing lined up for you. There. There you go. Anytime I can be of help, you just let me know, will you? Oh, isn't that a nice thing to say, Gabrielle? Indeed it was. Well, how are you today? Is, uh, is your sister Sarah around? We'd like to talk to her if we may. Well, she's gone out to the pasture, Mr. Cartwright, but I'm sure she'll be back shortly. Well. Shouldn't we ask them in? Y yes, I suppose. Well, Won't you, you come in, gentlemen? It's 
So you see, by helping you young ladies out, we're just trying to pay off an old debt to your uncle. We want to help however we can. The first thing we got to do is find out who's behind all this trouble. We already know who's behind it, Mr. Cartwright. I ask you to leave this house. But, Sarah, the Cartwrights are our guests. My son and I just came over as neighbors. I'll ask you to leave in the same fashion. Immediately. Miss Lowell, you may find this hard to understand, but we just came over to try to help out. You seem determined to bury us under deeper and deeper obligations. And you seem equally determined to fight the wrong people. You know, if you expended half the energy on making friends as you do on discouraging them, I think you'd find things a whole lot easier. I'm going to tell you something, Miss Lowell. You're going down to defeat. You seem determined to do that at your own hands. And you're going to drag your sisters along with you. Well, let that be my responsibility. Please leave. Good day, ladies. How could you? Did you hear him? He practically threatened me. He did not. You're the one who provoked him. Why'd you have to go and spoil everything? Oh, stop sniveling, Lorraine. Please, go see to Heather. Dr. Martin says she's to have constant care. Sarah, will, will you put that weapon down? It's Lucifer's tool. Gabrielle, we have no choice. We must defend our land. This is the only thing these people understand. Now, what'd you find out? Well, I'll tell you what we found out. Found out that Clerk Billings had sneaked into Catlin's office a while ago. That ties them all together. Yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? They haven't been able to drive the Lowell sisters off that ranch, and now I bet you they're going to try something a little more drastic. Let's see Roy Coffey. Yeah? Taught you how to load the guns, and we've practiced taking window positions four times. And we'll do it again and again until we can do it in our sleep. Sarah, I'm exhausted. And besides, I will not, not ever shoot one of those dreadful things. It's a question of survival. Well, there must be other ways for ladies to defend their house. Sarah, I'm ready. Heather, get back to your bed. You're not well enough to fight. But, Sarah... Get back to your bed. In this savage country, even ladies must defend their homes against wild animals and Indians and their neighbors, if necessary. But there's no need to fight the Cartwrights. Lorraine, I will not have you weeping at the mere mention of their names. But, Sarah, she's right. The Cartwrights are our friends. I will not discuss it. All right, get your bows and arrows. All right, ladies, positions. Excellent. Now, if anyone sets foot on our land, they'll pay the penalty.
Heather, take cover. No, I want to fight. Don't argue. I'm not arguing, but I'm not a baby anymore. And besides, who drew first blood? There's something moving out there. Don't panic. Oh, I, see one. I will not tolerate any panic. For you and your stupid ideas. Get some more bullets. I'll show you how to drive them out and won't be with any kids' trips either. What are you gonna do? Well, we should have done in the first place. All right, get rid of those stupid bows and arrows. Get your guns. We're going to settle this once and for all. You mean we're going to kill them women? We need this land, don't we? Now get your guns. Get going. My sisters and I are deeply indebted to you. I can only say for myself that when one is in strange country, one must exercise extreme caution. Well, of course, Miss Lowell, we, we can understand that. Quiet generosity seems to be a habit with you. You must come over for tea one day this week. And bring your sons, too. There's so much that, that we'd like to ask about ranching. So much to learn. Well, you, uh, you just ask the questions, ma'am, and we'll be glad to supply the answers if we can. You know, Paul, I just don't believe it. Just don't believe it. Four little ladies from Beacon Hill holding off that whole Indian tribe like, like seasoned troopers, huh? <laughs> I think I know a few people that can believe it. <laughs> yeah, they can sure believe that over there. <laughs> well, ladies, time to start supper. Sarah. Sarah. Well, I suppose seasoned Indian fighters do deserve special consideration. Company dismissed. <laughs> Won't you come in for some supper, gentlemen? I oh, would be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> you need any potatoes to eat on the house, I'll do it. I'll eat the On behalf of the citizenry of Virginia City and unaccustomed to the land, I get that. 
this be, sir? Oh, yes, In behalf of the citizens of this great city, it's done. What he's trying to say, ma'am, is that... Well, is it... Well, what we're all trying to say is that, that we're just... Might have to have you here, ma'am. Thank you, Pete. I have enjoyed Western hospitality in every city, town, and mining camp from Furnace Creek to Carson City. But never have I had such a warm and touching and beautiful welcome as I have received here in Virginia City today. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. Mr. Wells, my manager. Mr. Wells? Roy Coffee's my name. Mighty glad you? to know you. This is Horse Cartwright. Howdy. Little Hi. Joe Cartwright. How are you? And you? Mr. Searcy, the hotel man. A splendid, splendid reception. But I do have uh, one slight problem. Miss Bantry's luggage. Well, that's no problem at all. Horse here is one of Miss Bantry's greatest admirers, and he would be more than happy to render his service. Yes, ma'am. I, I sure would. Thank you. Thank you again, and I'll see all you boys tonight at the Gilded Lily. <laughs> Bantry's like I said. Go get him, admirer. <laughs> the songbird of the West. You must have a bunch of them little old skinny dresses to fill up all them bags. <laughs> Each performance a matchless miracle of tantalizing, captivating artistry. Better get your tickets early, boys. They're gonna go like hotcakes. Well, and you buckle it. Boy, the buckle who brother. Start tying everything down. Joe, I wonder if I ought to lock them fellas up now or wait for the tumble start. Well, now that's up to you, Roy. Last time you did it, they stole the cell. Celebrate. I mean, well, you, we gonna throw the wing dig and hoop and holler as far down water Virginia City ever seen. Yeah. Well, what, what's this all about? Oh, me and Buford hit it rich. Is that right? And I mean rich. After all these here sorry years of jackass single blanket prospecting, me and Lev done struck it rich. Silver. A whole mountain of it. Hey, you sure? Well, the Henshaw Mining Company sure is sure. Give us $50,000 cash for our claim and 5% of the royalties over that as long as the claim holds hey, up. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, going to congratulations, boys. Congratulations. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm Blackie Wells. And I want to be one of the first to congratulate the Lucky Fair. And I also want to invite all of you to see Dolly Bantry's opening performance here tonight as my guests. Dolly who? Why, Miss Dolly Bantry, the songbird of the West. Oh, no. No women for us. No. Every time me and Buford gets mixed up with a woman, it ends up nothing but trouble. Women's nothing but poison to us. Ain't that right, Buford? Yes, sir. Buford and me's give up women for life. I just told them we're through with women for life. Ain't that right, Buford? Buford. Oh, Buford. If your foot is pretty, show it, no matter where or when. Let all fair maidens know it, the foot takes all the men. The face so fair and lovely may charm the gazer's eye. But if the foot...
foot is homely, he'll quickly pass her by. He'll quickly, he'll quickly, he'll quickly pass her by. If your foot is pretty, show it when you drift along the street. For it will catch the eager eye of every man you meet. Don't toss your glossy ringlets, nor part your lips so sweet. But gently lift your petticoats and show your handsome feet. And show, and show, and show your handsome feet. I'll let you in on a little secret. The next number's even better. So is the costume. <laughs> I seen the sun setting on a painted desert, and I thought that was beautiful. I seen a mother doe and her two newborn baby fawns stop to drink at a waterfall under a full moon in a pine forest, and I thought that was beautiful. I've seen a tricolored Shanghai rooster a standing in a field of blooming clover crowing in a rainbow. And I thought that was beautiful. But I'll tell you, I never knowed what beautiful was till today. It's kind of pretty beautiful, almost, almost like poetry. Oh, yeah. Somebody ought to just follow him around, write him down every time he opens his mouth. I'll tell you one thing. She's everything you said about her. Dolly Bantry. Ain't that the most beautiful name you ever heard? Dolly, look, just don't give me any more arguments. You understand? I've got troubles enough. I know all about your troubles, and I've tried to help. You can't deny that. I've done my best. But not this time, Blackie. Not a smelly old desert rat. I won't do it. That smelly old desert rat, as you call him, has got 25,000 cash in the bank. Do you hear me? 25,000 hot, restless dollars just itching to get away from him. Now, do you think I'm going to let you make me miss a chance like that? Please, you're hurting me. Well, I'm going to hurt you a lot more unless you get out there and make him feel like a colt. You're going to make him want to romp and play and start writing checks. All right, Blackie. But this is the last time... Just uh, get out there and do it. Alouette, gentil alouette. Alouette, je te plumerai. Je te plumerai le dos, je te plumerai le dos. Et le dos, et la bec, et la tête. Gentil alouette. What can the matter be, dear, dear? What can the matter be, oh, dear? What can the matter be, Johnny, so long at the fair? He promised he'd buy me a fairing should please me and then for a kiss. Oh, he vowed he would tease me. He promised he'd buy me a bunch of blue ribbons to tie up my bonny blonde hair. Oh, dear, what can the matter be, dear, dear? What can the matter be, oh, dear? What can the matter be, Johnny, so long at the fair? Maybe we could have a little supper again after the show. Get a little better acquaintance. Yes, ma'am. Pleasure to be great. She's stuck on me. Oh, Buford. If gunpowder was brains, you wouldn't have enough to blow your hat off. That 
that and burn it, Paul. How can you say there wasn't nothing to it? You seen it with your own eyes, didn't you? Now, you gotta admit, she, she was kind of playing up to Buford. Yeah, then asking him to walk her down to the hotel afterwards. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Buford buckaloo. <laughs> Oh, it sounds to me you might be just a little jealous of Buford. Oh, Paul, je me jealous of Buford? Yeah, you're oh, jealous of Buford. Paul, yeah. just a little mystified, that's all. What? About what Buford has that you haven't? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and joke about it. Big laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Gotta admit, it's a little bit strange. Uh, well, I think Mr. Bantry's probably having a little bit of fun. Pass the butter, please. Having a little bit of fun with Buford and... Oh, he enjoyed her. You got a big thrill out of it. She didn't look like she was joking to me, Bob. And if she was, she's making a big mistake, because I guarantee you Buford's dead serious. <laughs> I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. You know, I was just thinking about what you were saying about Buford having something at Austinham. What's that? A half share of $50,000. You know, it just could be Miss Bantry's just after his money. Joseph, you have an evil mind. Miss Bantry's not that kind of woman. She's a, she's a lady of the first degree. Well, Hoss, you know, if, uh, if Miss Bantry wasn't having fun with Buford and isn't after his money, do you realize there's only one possibility left? What's that? That Buford's right. She's stuck on him. Where's that Casanova brother of yours? Inside, a Casanova end. Two hundred. See that? And I'll uh, tap you. Two pair, kings over tens. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not quite good enough, Buford. I've got three shiny jacks. Oh. So there's that sneaky, conniving jack of hearts. Where was your last time when I needed you? You're no good bushwhacking, blanket stealing, claim jumping polecat. Hey! Lost cart ride! Hey, you old mule swamp for you. Howdy, Buford. What are you drinking? How much you winning over there, Buford? Oh, Blackie's a little ahead, but I'll I'll peel him yet. I'll get some more ready cash, and we're going to go at it again this evening. Sure you will. I got a charge account at the bank. <laughs> now, Buford, honey, don't you forget you're going to escort me to work this evening. Blood poison, abscess teeth, and boils wouldn't keep me away. Oh, Buford, you say the sweetest things. Ain't she some pumpkin? Hey, Lev, come on in and buy some beer. What? Why, you come in here this morning with over $2,500. You mean you lost all of that? Lost it nothing. Lost, I'm going to show you something that'll scald your eyeballs. Little uh, surprise I got for Dolly. I'm going to give it to her this evening. Yeah, them's real diamonds. That there was made up special in Paris, France. Ain't another like it in the whole world. Where'd you get a gigaw like that? I bought it off of Blackie Wells for only $2,000. $2,000? $2, yeah, just like stealing. Now buy us that drink. Three beers. Whiskey. Buford, what was Blackie Wells doing with a diamond necklace like that? Oh, he had it made up for a girlfriend of his in San Francisco. And when he come back from Europe, he found out she'd throwed him over for another fella, so he was stuck with this here necklace. Well, Black 
Jackie's loss is Dolly's gain. That figures. Buford, two thousand dollars is a powerful lot of money to be spending on just a casual acquaintance. Bella hits it big. He kind of relishes spending money. Besides, this here ain't what I'd call casual. Oh, now, come on, Buford. Use your head. You think anything really serious is going to come of you and and the likes of Miss Dolly Bantree? Why not? What's wrong with her? Buford, Buford, there ain't nothing wrong with her. That burnt, I admire her as much as any man. You know that. It ain't her, Buford. It's you. Well, what's wrong with me? Buford, Buford, there ain't nothing wrong with you. Buford. It's just that well, you just ain't the type for an elegant lady like Dolly Bantry now. That ought to tell you something. Hmm. Yeah. Tells me one of us is so jealous, he's just choking up on it. I don't blame your hoss. No hard feelings. You know, Lev, I don't like to talk about a man I don't know. But there's something, just something about that Blackie Wells that I don't like. I feel the same way, only a little stronger. Yeah? It's hard to believe that a lady as pretty as that Dolly Bantry could be mixed up in something crooked, ain't it? Cause. You know, a beaver tail cactus has got about the prettiest, most innocent looking bloom any flower that grows. Did you ever brush up against one? that you bought me in Chicago. Oh, you'll, uh, you'll get that back this evening. A, uh, <laughs> surprise from your Romeo. You didn't. You took advantage of that poor, innocent man. You know, Blackie, sometimes I think you'd pick the pocket of a corpse. Well, you ought to be glad I did it, instead of making a fuss about it. Look, $2,000, baby. When this gets to San Francisco, we'll be free and clear. So far as I am concerned, we are free and clear right now. Baby, what are you saying? You thought you were king of the poker players. You had to buck the big game in San Francisco. Gonna make a fortune. Put us on Knob Hill with all the swells. So what happens? You lose all your money, all of my money, and $15,000 more. Ancient history. What's that got to do with anything? A lot, Blackie. You told me they'd kill you if you didn't pay off. Yeah, and I told you true. Half the bodies they fish out of that bar are men last seen playing in a big game. Losers who couldn't pay. All right, all right. I went along with you. It made me feel cheap and mean and dirty. But I helped you get the 15000 But that's all behind us, Blackie, and I am not going to do it anymore. Oh. All right, baby. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. This will be the last one. We get Buford's money, and then we stop. No! We will stop right now! Please, Blackie. Maybe we can't go back to what we were. Because, because well, we're, we're different people now, but we could at least try. Dolly, don't ever forget. Everything that I've ever been involved in you've been involved in. So if you start acting up, I won't be the only one in trouble. I'll turn on you, baby. Quick. You'd do that? If I have to. But I won't have to, will I? Because you're going to help me. Aren't you, baby? I'm going to help you. That's my dolly. Any good to paper? Mm -hmm. Supper on table. It's time you get here. 
Where's Mr. Hoss? Upstairs, I guess. Oh, maybe so, Mr. Hoss sick? Not come to supper? Well, he came in about an hour ago. He's carrying a box almost as big as he was. I was wondering what was in it. Why don't you go ask him? Yeah, well, I, I, I did ask him, Pop. But he wouldn't tell me, so I'm, I'm wondering. Would you like to read the paper? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, thank you. is right. Mr. Hoss is very sick. A man goes out and buys some new clothes, and that's a reason for staring, huh? Ah. You uh, join the circus? Oh, no. <laughs> this suit is uh, too loud for circus. <laughs> it's no good for work, either. Joe, this is not a work suit. A clerk at the store told me this is the kind of suit that a man in society wears. Uh, well, maybe a higher role than gambling man. Yeah? Does it really, Paul? Yeah. If it does, that's just the outfit I'm after. What do you mean? What are you up to? Well, Joe thinks that, that Miss Dolly and Blackie are just after Buford's money, and, and I aim to find out whether or not that's a fact. Well, you come to supper now. I'm having supper in town with a lady, I'm saying. Sure, no, yes, son, King Jay. <laughs> High rolling gambler, man. <laughs> Looks like a casino. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Miss Dolly. I come to escort you to the Gilded Lily. Come in, Buford. I bring you some... Uh, oh. oh, they're from an old friend of yours, that Dolly, Mr... Horace Cartwright! Why, hi there, Buford. Well, that's a pretty little bouquet of roses you got there. What are you doing here, you double-timing, backstabbing... Well, I, uh, I was just having a little bite to eat here with Blackie and Miss Dolly. We had... Uh, Antelope steaks and champagne. A horse was just telling us about the Ponderosa. Yes, um, cattle and uh, timber and horses. And a two-legged, soft-soaping, fork-tongued varmint that's supposed to be a friend of mine. It's the, uh, the biggest ranch I ever heard of. Yes. Oh, there's still some of your fine champagne left, Mr. Cartwright. Let me fill your glass. Uh, by all means, Blackie, if you'll pour a glass for my friend here, Buford, too. I can buy my own. If Miss Dolly likes that stuff, I'll buy her a wagon full. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Buford, we were talking about that exact thing when you walked in the door. You know, I mean, after you and old Lev found that little piddly silver mine up there, I got to thinking, man can have a lot of fun with his money instead of just leaving it around a bank to collect dust and interest. I mean, after watching you boys run and play and hoot and holler, I decided I'd do me a little of it myself. Oh, Scott, right? I'm going to climb you like a tree. I'm going to hammer that head of yours Buford, to a point. Buford, you're then I'm going to offend you. Megaphone. And I'm going to drive you in the ground like a of, steak. You're too much of a gentleman. Huh? Buford. A gentleman. You hear that? Well, I... I think it's time to go. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Well, just a gall dang minute. I asked her first. That's right, Buford. But I got here first, with the most. And that's the way it goes, Buford. Them that has gets. Sorry. <laughs> Don't you ever knock? Look, I, um, I want you to forget Buford. That Cartwright was telling the truth. I want you to go after him. No, Blackie, please, please. He's, he's such a nice man. Uh, the Ponderosa is even bigger than he said it was. 
Cattle they can't even count. Horses, timber enough to build a dozen cities. I won't do it. Baby, you're not listening. The Ponderosa's richer than the Comstock ever was. Now you're gonna help me take him, or I'm gonna spoil that pretty face of yours. For good. Now get out there. Blackbird in the spring neath the willow tree sat and piped. I heard him sing, sing of Orly, 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 made of golden hair. Sunshine came along with the. And swallows in the air. On her cheek, the rose was born. Twas music when she spake. In her eyes, the rays of morn with sudden splendor break. Orly, orly, made of golden hair. Sunshine came along with thee and swallows in the air. Excuse me, gentlemen. Fight like a man! Sit up here and mind your own business and just take care of yourself. Now, don't burn it, Lev. He's making me mad. He's his own worst enemy. Don't hurt him. Now, what do you men think you're doing? Well, hi, Roy. Why, we're just having a little discussion and... Well, if there's anybody here that don't want to spend the next couple of days in jail, he better sit right down and pacify us, though. Buford Buckaloo. And Lev Buckaloo. Evening, Sheriff. If you gentlemen will join me, I'll take you into protective custody. Now, come on. And protect have to... you from what? From yourselves. Now, come on. I got that jail cell of yours all fixed and ready. You'll feel right as well. Oh, come on. Now, don't it. You're giving me a lot of trouble here. <laughs> you imagine a scrawny pipsqueak like that trying to take on a man like you? Why, well, he must have been out of his mind. Yeah. Well, I, I reckon Buford figured that he had something worth fighting for, Blackie. You know, we ain't all as lucky as you are. We can't just win the things we want in a poker game. Miss Dolly. Good night, Hoss. I was afraid after 
after what happened last night that you you might change your mind about showing me the Ponderosa. Not a chance, Miss Dolly. I made a promise to take you for a ride. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'd give anything if it hadn't happened, Haas. I mean that. Don't give it a thought, Miss Dolly. We have them little scuffles all the time. Nobody ever gets hurt. I'm not so sure of that. I know that you and Buford were very good friends before. Well, Buford will get over it. He ain't one for a grudge. Get up. Howdy, Roy. Hi, Haas. Dolly. What that horse is doing? He's taking Miss Darling buggy right. Name calling ain't gonna help or change the thing. Now, if this was a two horse race, you and Hoss, I'd have to say that he's all but out of sight and you ain't even left the barn yet. Maybe it's all for the best. <sighs> yeah, I guess I don't blame you for saying that, Rev. All the scrapes you got me out of in the past, all the messes I've been in. But Miss Dolly, she ain't any more like the others than the sunrise is like the night. Uh, I ain't been around enough women to really know, but I gotta admit, she looks mighty nice. Nice? Why, she's... she's plumb... <sighs> Lev, they just ain't invented words to tell you how I feel about her. She don't have to do nothing... I don't have to smile. He just walks by. And... I know. I've seen it. And I might even believe she's all you say if we hadn't been through all of this so many times before. days the same but always beautiful what a wonderful way to live it's a funny thing for you to say miss dolly i uh, half the people in town would change their lives for your kind of romantic and exciting life i'd trade with them any day are all sure people like you how do you mean? I mean, well, you're different than you was when you first came here. And when you put on them show clothes and do all that singing and stuff, well, you're just different, you know? I don't know how to explain it. It's... You put it very well, Haas. Well, now, when you're like you are now, a fella can talk to you and... pretty and... Well, it ain't just play acting, you know? I know what you're trying to say, Haas. The Dolly Bantry in Spangles and Sequins isn't a real person. And you can just change from this Dolly to that one? Well, not exactly. The other Dolly is always around, no matter how much this one would like to be rid of her. Well... I guess we should be getting back to town. No, ma'am, not just yet. Get up. Thank you, Hobson. Of course, the uh, Ponderosa didn't come into being overnight. As with most enterprises, uh, we've had a lot of luck. We've been very fortunate. I'll remember this house. So big and, and warm and, and friendly. So exactly right. Well, I, I take that as a high compliment, Miss Bantry. That's what we've been trying to build. 
Special dessert, Missy. Dolly, number one apple pie. Little Joe, he eat a whole one before he leave this afternoon. Hop Singer, I, I couldn't possibly. What's your matter? You know like Hop Singer cooking? Oh, I love it. It's just that I'm absolutely stuffed. You should eat more, Missy. You little bit thin. <laughs> well, I don't dare. I, I wouldn't fit into my costumes. You'll have to excuse Hop Singer's pantry. He, uh, he's an expert at minding other people's business. Well, Miss Dolly, I, I hate to rush you, but since you're not going to have any pie anyhow... And there's a bunch of boys who got tickets to that show tonight. I think we better get moving or they're going to be terribly disappointed. Well, I guess the show has a more peaceful ending tonight than last night. I can't tell you what my being here has meant to me. Living the way I do, one jury hotel room after another, well, you forget what a real home is like. I don't mean just the, the rooms and the furnishings, but well, you know what I mean. I think I do. Missy Dolly, goodbye present for you. Oh. One whole number one pie. Same as for little Joe. Maybe so more better you become too big for costume. Mr. Ben say they hardly enough to want shotgun. <laughs> oh, well. Mr. Cartwright, I do believe you're blushing. Don't give it a thought. Thank you again. Thank you, Hopsy. See you later, Paul. Thank you very much. Before you look at me like that, Hopsing only tell lady what you say. Yeah, I did say that. That's true. But I also said the costume was very becoming on her. Oh. <laughs> You know, this is a real comfortable bed. If I thought all jails was like this, I might even be tempted to take up a life of crime. It's about time he's letting us out. Buchan, you just better be thankful that Hoss Cartwright didn't file assault charges against you. Otherwise, you'd have been in here for another 30 days. That double-dealing, fork-tongued woman stealing varmint will be lucky if I don't tie his ears in a knot. <laughs> Being in jail does that to Buford. Gets him all riled up. After he's been out a while, he even gets worse. He gets worse? Give me a level beer. Buford? It's, uh, good to see you. If you want to, uh, step over to one of the tables while we can butt our heads together in a little two-hand poker. Fine friend you turned out to be. Letting Dolly go buggy riding with that. Hiding over in the corner, huh? Scared I was gonna walk you around again like yesterday, huh? Buford, I wasn't hiding. I was just sitting here waiting for you to get through spouting off over there so I could tell you. You ain't telling me nothing. I'm doing the telling. You keep your consar nose out of my business. And if I don't ever see you again, it's gonna be four days too soon. Buford, Buford. Miss Dolly Bantry has just confessed that the necklace that you purchased from Mr. Blackie Wells here for $2,000 was nothing but a string of glass beads. And... That him and her was in cahoots to separate you from your money. Why, you double shut Shut up. Now, Buford, it's up to you. You know your rights. What do you want to do about it? It's kind of up to me, ain't it? Yeah. If I was to ask you to, why, you'd have to throw him in jail. And if I just wanted to be middle and mean, why, you'd run him out of town. Yeah. Like this takes a little thinking about it. Sheriff, you mind if I have a little talk with him in private before I make up my mind? Well, no, not if that's what you want. Yeah, I, I just want to do the right thing. Right. Mr. Wells? Stop this. 
That Blackie's liable to hurt Buford something bad. He's mean. Real mean. Don't worry about Buford. He'll take care of himself. Whips me about every other week. Cosmo, you got a beer over there. Please. Do something. Sorry, man. There's nothing I can do. They just having a little discussion. Now, Blackie can be real reasonable. Give me back every dime of my money. Don't think I'll have you lock him up, Sheriff. Be satisfied if you just run him out of town with the understanding he don't even look back till he gets to Sacramento. He'll be on that first freight wagon out of town, Buford. Now, Miss Dolly here, she brought me the evidence. I expect you're going to be dropping the charges again her. Would you want her on that same freight wagon? No, sir. No, sir, Sheriff. I want her locked up. Buford! Do your duty, Sheriff. I want to press my charges again. her. I'm sorry, Miss Dolly. Uh, Buford knows his right. Quit your sobbing and just throw her in the calaboose. Yes, sir. Buford! You can't mean that. I mean it! And if you don't keep your consarn nose out of my business, I'll get you locked up, too. Well, Lamb, what are you waiting for? Come on! Why is he doing this tonight? Oh, Miss Dolly. As soon as I can find him, I think I can get him to drop his charges. He's probably off somewhere studying about it right now. Well, I found you both right where I want you. And I got a lot to say to you, Hoscott, right? Now, you've been sneaking up on it about as clumsy as a newborn calf. Wearing them fancy duds. Making out what an ignorant, uncurried, miserable-looking galoot I am. When all the time what you was really trying to do is tell me Miss Dolly wasn't interested in me. Just my money. Well, Buford, I was, I was just trying to do what was best for you, that's all. What kind of a numbskull do you take me for? You think I didn't know what they was up to? Dad, Bernie, Buford, the way you was acting... Any woman would rather have a rich man than a poor one. And if money's what it takes for me to have Dolly Bantree, she can have every penny I got. I don't know what money's good for if it ain't to buy the things you want in life. And all I want's Dolly. I had to say it, Miss Dolly... <laughs> That's why I had the sheriff lock you up, so that there Blackie wouldn't make you go away with him. So he wouldn't walk away before I got his said. I wouldn't have walked away. Well, it's any all of it. There's a mite over $20,000 there, and there's more where that come from. Now, if it's fine hotels and fancy living you want, you can have it. I know I ain't as slick as Blackie Wells, but I do my best to see you ain't never ashamed of me. On the other hand, this, this your money could buy a little ranch I know of not too far out of town. There'd be enough left over to buy a starter herd of beef and to get the paint and the lumber to fix it up and the barn and the house and things. Living wouldn't be too easy. But if it's got any appeal to you, I'm offering you all the sweat and calluses I can raise in addition to my good name. Either way, I take as good a care of you as any man can, and I do my darndest to be any kind of man you want me to. If you have me. Buford. If you are the god darndest, I'll twist him as wonderful a sweetheart a girl could have his heart. <laughs> oh, I 
should like to marry If that I could find a very handsome fellow Suited to my mind Or I should like him dashing Or I should like him gay The leader of the fashion The dandy of the day Oh, I should like to marry If that I could find A very handsome fellow Suited to my mind Wedding present for you, Missy Dolly. Hot sing is beautiful. Gentlemen, the bride! The bride! Wagon in the ditch up ahead, Mr. Dixon. I think you better have a look at it. I agree with you, Sergeant. Better take a man with you. Check the wagon and the area on both sides of the road. Corporal. After riding for so many hours, it's just nice to be able to stand up for a little while. Yes, I know how you feel, Candace, but I must ask you and your brother to stay in the coach. Why? Because some silly old wagon went off into the ditch? You worry too much, Mr. Dixon. Elena, that is his job. I know, and he takes it very seriously. Looks like you got trouble. <sighs> Nothing me, a blacksmith and ten dollars couldn't fix. All I'm short of is the blacksmith and the ten dollars. Sorry we can't give you a hand with that, but we can't spare the time. Good luck. Thank you. You see, they're coming back. All that worry for nothing. When do we get to the Ponderosa? Noon. A little after that. Just what it looks like. A wagon with a busted wheel, one man trying to fix it. Both sides of the road are clean. Good. All right, let's move out. Yes, sir. Move out. It worked very well. You stopped the coach where you said you would. I give you that. You saw the jewels the Countess was wearing. Gigors. Could have been beer bottle glass. Diamonds and rubies. Worth more money than you ever saw. Now, wait a minute, Peters. No matter what the Count and Countess have with them, or how much it's worth, you ain't never gonna get close to it. Not with those troopers and the Ponderosa ranch hands in your way. <laughs> so that's the end of that idea. You're wrong, Hardesty. It's only the beginning. All right, come on. Good, good. All right, now, everybody. You all know what to do. Now, when they come in here, Hopsing is going to show them to the guest rooms. The guest rooms are ready, aren't they? All ready. Four, five, day now. Yeah, good, hey, here good. they come. I'm Ben Cartwright. How do you do? It's an honor to have you here, sir. Thank you. And this is my sister, Countess Elena. Countess Elena. Oh, please, not so formal. I am Elena, and this is Alexis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 
These are my, my sons. Hoss. Howdy, ma'am. How do you do? And uh, Joseph. How are you? How do you do? How do you do? Nice to see you. Howdy. Oh, and this is Mr. Dixon, the United States Secret Service. Mr. Conrad? Mr. Dixon? Nice of you to be here. Uh, Hoss, would you look after the horses and the troopers? Uh, this way, please. Well, the house is so right. It belongs here as if it grew like the trees. Well, as a matter of fact, it did somewhat. When your father was foreman here, it was about half the size it is now. We've added considerably to it since then. Speaking of my father, Stubb Jones sends his best regards. Stubb Jones? Does your father still think of himself as Stubb Jones? Indeed he does. <laughs> <laughs> he still calls himself a cowboy. Oh, gosh, there's so many things I'd like to ask you about your father, but all that'll have to wait until you've changed it. Um, Hop Singh, will you show our guests to their rooms? This most happy occasion for Hop Singh. This way, please. San Francisco was a headache. The Countess decided that she wanted to see Chinatown. What she didn't realize was that everyone in Chinatown wanted to see her. <laughs> we very nearly had a had a riot. <laughs> we got the troopers all quartered and everything's taken care of, Paul. Good. Yeah, Mr. Dixon was just telling us what it's like to travel with nobility. Yes, I've been waiting for a chance to uh, discuss the problems here. Mm. I think this is as good a time as any. What, uh, what kind of problems do you mean? Well, the Count and Countess are in this country as guests of the President. Their personal safety is of great concern to Washington. And it's also my responsibility. If anything... Anything, gentlemen, should happen to either of them. It could cause an international uproar. Hmm. Yes, I could uh, understand that, I think, but uh, surely you're not expecting anything to happen. <laughs> the Countess has brought her um, jewels. A collection valued more than a quarter of a million dollars. Hmm. It's been reported in every paper in the country. A fat target for every thief who can read. Well, uh, let's see now. We, uh, we have a small safe here. That will help some. But we'll also need um, round-the-clock guards. And uh, with your permission, Mr. Cartwright, I'd like to check out um, every entrance in the house, take a look at the outbuildings, everything. Oh, well, fine, certainly. Hoss and little Joe will show you around. You bet, any time you're ready. Good. If you... Uh, would it be good enough to put this in the safe? Certainly. We can do it now. You'll make camp. Halfway up that slope, in the cluster of trees and rocks. I want one of you standing guard watch every minute. I keep the horses out of sight and stay off the skyline. And no campfire till it's too dark to see the smoke. Now listen, with the Count and Countess of the Ponderosa, this whole country's gonna be swarmed with troopers and lawmen. Yes, they'll question everyone they see. That's why I want you to stay out of sight. Now what are you gonna be doing while we're holed up like prairie dogs? Riding into Virginia City to get what I need to make you all rich. I'll be back tomorrow night. Now, go on, up the hill. Yes, sir, when your father was foreman here at the Ponderosa, he knew every inch of this territory. And he knew every steer and every heifer, too. Superb cattle, Mr. Cartwright. Now I understand why my father wanted me to visit the Ponderosa. Yeah, well, if you're going to take over his job as advisor to the Russian cattle industry, he had a good idea sending you over here, see what cattle raising is like in this part of the world. It's just beautiful. Well, we think so. There's a lot more to see, too. One dollar. I wonder what's keeping Peters. I've been thinking about that, too. He said he'd be here tonight. The night ain't over yet. He'll be here. He's a foreigner, and I don't trust him. There's no reason not to trust him. We've done pretty good since he's been running things. Why don't you shut up and bet? 
Two dollars. Thanks, folks. Could be a sellout. He could be telling the sheriff where we are. Why would he? For the reward money. Makes a deal. Sheriff gets the four of us, and he gets a pocket full of money and walks away free. All those jewels waiting for us, you think he's going to settle for three or four thousand dollars? Two thousand. I looked at the wanted posters in front of the sheriff's office. That's all you're worth. Five hundred apiece, dead or alive. You know, there's one thing I can depend on harvesting. As soon as I'm out of sight, you try to take over. And use some of that food, Slim, fix me a plate. Yes, sir. A man's got a right to think of his own neck. There were ten of us when I joined up. Only five left. Three of the men we lost were good friends of mine. Violent death is one of the risks of our trade. Look, risks I don't mind. Banks and stages are fine. But this Ponderosa thing, you want to get us all killed? Nobody asked you to join us. Saddle ride out any time you like. Here you go, boss. Yeah. We wrestle our own grub. Why do you wait on him like that? Because I told him to. As long as he rides with me, he takes orders from me. High and mighty, aren't you? You think you're better than we are. Well, I'll tell you something, mister. You ain't. Sit down, Hardesty. Shut up. Don't you tell me what to do. From now on, shut up! You try that again, Hardesty. I'll kill you. Picked up something interesting in Virginia City. Read that. Listen to this. The jewel collection is said by experts who have seen it to be worth more than a quarter of a million dollars. Quarter of a million dollars? That's right, Horace. You ride with us now or not? <laughs> I'm in. For a share of that kind of money, I'll ride even with you. Tomorrow, I ride to the Ponderosa. Ponderosa? That's right. Pete, I don't know what you have in mind, but I'm riding with you. Huh. Well, I ride alone. There isn't that much money in the whole world. Not just the money, Slim. I've got an old score to settle. I'm not going to miss the chance. Howdy, stranger. Something we can do for you? If this is the Ponderosa, yes. You got the right place. I've come a long way to see my old friends, Countess Elena and Count Alexis. Your old friends? Who are you? Prince Vladimir Pavelovich Preznov. At your service. The fellow over here says he's a prince. Vlad! Ah! Oh, how good it is to see you. I don't know how good it is to see you again. <laughs> what a wonderful meal. 
And how wonderful it is to see you here. Your father said you were someplace in America, but we'd given up all hope of seeing you. When I read you were coming to the Ponderosa, I rode day and night. <laughs> and you'll stay as long as we do? Oh. Well, of course you will. We have plenty of room here. I've been your debt, sir. Not at all. It's our pleasure. Oh, I think we're being urged to uh, move into the living room and have our brandy. More better. Everybody more comfortable. <laughs> Prince moves pretty quick, don't he, little brother? County's ain't had eyes for nobody else but him. You can say that again. A toast to our reunion, your warm welcome, and to beauty. Here, here. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, your brandy is as superb as your hospitality. <laughs> Thank you, Your Highness. No, call me Vlade, please. In all America, you and your sons are the only people who know I was born a prince. I should like to keep it that way. But you are still a prince, aren't you? Well, of course he is. No, not here, Elena. All that was long ago and far away. Vladi was the youngest colonel in the Tsar's army. He won the medal for valor in the Crimea. Purely accidental, I assure you. Vladi was also known as one of the finest horsemen in Russia. Yes, you remember when you won the Cossacks Cup in St. Petersburg? Oh, barely, Elena, all that happened in a different world. The Winter Festival, the Tsar's Palace, the birthday ball. Remember, Vladi, that's the first time you ever danced with me. Yes, I remember. Magnificent uniforms, Glittering decorations, beautiful women. And you outshone them all. Mind if I join you? Not at all. You seem uh, rather interested in the prince. Any special reason? He's what he says he is. Alexis tells me he and Elena have uh, known him since they were children. But he is an unexpected visitor. You do well in the Secret Service, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I'm going to go out and see if the troopers need anything. Fine. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll join him. Countess, would you care for some more? No, thank you. Please. Well, Vladdy, it sounds like you've been over in this country quite a while. I thought a prince had to stay around home and keep acting like a prince all the time. Only if you are a firstborn son. Under the law of primogeniture, the first son inherits the estates and the responsibilities. But I am a second son. Oh, I was not burdened with that. I was free to seek a career in the military or to roam the world. And you picked the military? Until the fighting was over. Then I decided to seek Dame Fortune in other lands. <laughs> Thus far, she has been a fickle and elusive jade. Don't you miss your home? Home. I'd forgotten how good that word could sound. You seem to have forgotten an awful lot. But not everything. I have something in my saddlebag I'd like to show you. If you'll excuse me. Certainly. We had a little talk. Of course. Come in. Come in. No, uh, Vladi, I really wasn't surprised to find you here. I knew you'd catch up with us sooner or later. <laughs> and this brief encounter can be most pleasant. As long as you remember, it must be brief. 
I would have it no other way. <laughs> oh, you still have great charm. You're a liar and a rogue, but you have great charm. That performance downstairs, Prince Vladi, second son, too proud to live on his brother's charity, too much the dashing hussar to remain in uniform once there was no more war to fight, no headlong charge to lead. <laughs> you did it very well. You flatter me. We both know that a second son does not inherit wealth, but he can marry it. My sister is a wealthy woman. She's also a romantic. She was once very fond of you. And you're afraid she still is? Don't worry. All that is long since dead. Yes, well, she doesn't know about the gambling debts. The looted mess fund. The hushed-up court-martial, which very nearly ended with you facing a firing squad. Twenty crimes you were charged with. Twenty... No. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Well, she doesn't know about that. But you will tell her. Only if I must. With great delight, I'm sure. No, Vladi. With great regret. Because, you see, it would hurt her deeply. And I'd like to spare her that if I can. Shall we say three days? And then you remember urgent business elsewhere. Alexis, has it occurred to you I might have changed? <laughs> you have? Yes. In the years since you last saw me, I've changed. I'm now a cowboy. I work with my hands. I'm as penniless as I was in St. Petersburg, but now I'm free to come and go as I please. And I take orders from no one. Well, Vladi, if it's money that you need, I certainly can... No. I don't want your money. Now, that's interesting. Perhaps you have changed. That's Elena's locket you have there, isn't it? You were going to show it to her to prove how much you've loved her all through the years of your exile. Three days. Winter is the time to be in St. Petersburg. There are snow palaces and the tinkling of sleigh bells. And slush. And wind and frostbite. The water in the basin freezes before you have a chance to shave. That's one of the reasons that uh, so many of my countrymen wear beards. <laughs> Don't tell all these nice people such big fat fibs. I'll tell them about the day the ladies of the court came to the ranch to visit you. Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> she was being considered as a lady in waiting. These two bristling dowagers came to the ranch to give their final approval. It's my darling brother sent them down to the branding corral. They arrived just in time to see Elena rope, tie, and brand a calf. <laughs> Superb performance, but hardly the thing to qualify her as one of the delicate ladies of the court. <laughs> what would the two dowagers say? Oh, nothing. They fainted. <laughs> Excuse me. went upstairs to get something you wanted to show me. A trinket. I couldn't find it. And so you walk right past me and come out here? Mm. 
I remember a time that you used to like to show me the stars. Tell me the names of them. Look, there's Andromeda. Oh. Andromeda's behind you. You were so happy a few moments ago. Now you've turned to ice. What happened, Vladi? I was remembering, too. The night we looked at the stars from your father's garden. I asked you to marry me. And I said I would. And the next day you were on your way to Paris. Well, you know why. You talked it over with your parents and decided you could do better than a penniless prince. Oh, Flatty, that's not true. You swore to love me forever, no matter what your parents said or did. Brave words, I remember them well. <laughs> forever turned out to be a little less than 12 hours. My mother and dad had heard things. Gossip. They wanted me to be very sure, and they, they asked me to wait for three months without seeing you. Then if we hadn't changed our minds, they wouldn't have objected. Oh! Alina, get down! Search the ground. See if there's anybody else. Yes, sir. <clears throat> He's dead. Ain't the big man himself. Get down, pour yourself a drink. Slim Rivers is dead. Oh. Sorry to hear that. What's he doing at the Ponderosa? Oh, I sent him in to see if he needed any help. We were wondering what you were doing about the jewels. The jewel chest is kept locked away in a safe, 24 hours a day. You make it sound so tough, your highness. <laughs> you see, I was at the Ponderosa, too. Andy Peters, a real, genuine 14 karat prince. The Countess and you were going to get married one day. She still seemed pretty fond of you. So I'll tell you, we won't worry about that safe. Not when you got the counters there in your pocket.
Vladdy. Still the wild man. That horse of his puts his foot in a hole, he'll be a sorry one. Ah, Alexis. What a wonderful day for riding. We wondered what had become of you. I awakened early. I thought if that man in the barnyard last night was truly an outlaw, he would have friends. I rode out looking for tracks. By yourself? That's a good way to get killed. That wouldn't occur to Vladdy. He used to lead charges into the jaws of enemy artillery. But the little man in the barnyard was alone. I searched uh, from this grove to those hills. Nothing. Saves us the trouble. You ready to go back, sir? On a day like this, when I came out to ride? No, what about you, Vladdy? We ride, of course. You know, there is at least one advantage to being a second son. I'm not burdened with an escort. I envy you that. Everywhere I go, it seems the view is cluttered with soldiers. Suppose we take them up a little, huh? Show them how Cossacks ride. As we used to do at home? Fox and hounds! Ha! Ha! Confusion to the troopers. <laughs> Not very nice, perhaps, but I can't remember when I've enjoyed myself more. Well, we'd better start back. Well, Not just yet. I have some friends I want you to meet. What do you hope to gain by this? Elena's jewels. And a great deal of personal satisfaction. You know, Vladi, I really hoped that you had changed. But I suppose once a thief, always a thief. Spoken like a true first son. But all I want back from you is a little of what I lost. You know what this will do to Elena? She's one of the few Perhaps the only one who still believes in you. For what she did to me, I want to see her hurt. Your Royal Highness, let's go. It was like the glorious days of our youth again. Alexis and I were the fox, and the troopers were the confused hounds. Alexis and I separated, which is part of the game. And I lost him. But there's no need to be concerned. I'm sure he'll find his way back soon. Oh, sure, but you've been back for more than an hour already. He could have had an accident. His horse could have thrown him. He Mr. could have with a broken leg. Mr. Carter, Alexis is a superb horseman. He doesn't know this country. It's very easy for a horse to step into a gopher hole right. Since you're so worried, I'll join you on a search. We'll look where I last saw you. I think we should. Oh, wait a minute. Mr. Cartwright, that area is being covered by my men. Did you happen to see anyone else while you were out riding? No. Oh, I didn't. Well, that's at least some comfort. <laughs> I'm going to try again as soon as the troopers can saddle some fresh mounts. Well, you saddle up my horse. I'm going along with you. Yes, sir. Uh, no, Mr. Cartwright, I'd rather you stay here with the Countess. Let's get back to the ranch. They got Alexi. French carriage pistols. 
Now, I once owned a pair like these. They were very popular with friends who were challenged to a duel and had a choice of weapons. Mm. That's because they're so inaccurate. Yeah. You know, even at 20 paces, you couldn't hit a barn, let alone a man. But both parties could fire. Honor satisfied. No blood drawn. <laughs> Still no word of Alexis? Not yet. But he used to get lost off, and you remember? Sooner or later, he came home. This is strange country. Oh, yes, but the North Star is still in the same place. He always used that to guide himself. Well, I suppose you're right. I'd like to lock these in the chest, if I may. Yes, certainly. Guns. Why do they fascinate men so much? I suppose because they make such nice, loud noises. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you won't mind if I keep this for a minute. I want to show Vladdy something that's in it. Oh, sure. Oh, excuse me. My, uh, most prized possession. You remember? Yes, I remember. It's your medal for valor given to you by the Tsar himself. And you gave it to me in place of an engagement ring. And you kept it all this time? Yes. Because it was given to me by the only man I've ever loved or ever will. I told you that in a letter I wrote the morning I left for Paris. Letter? I had no letter. I know that now. That's why you've been so remote. You thought I turned my back on you and ran away. There was a letter, Vladdy. I swear it. I gave it to Alexis and he promised me faithfully he'd mail it. And he didn't? that could be. Alexis never liked me much. Oh, he liked you? Oh, I, I was not the man for his sister. When I came back, you were gone, and I, I couldn't find out why or where. I just knew that you had gotten into some kind of trouble. Come home with me, Vladi. No, I can't. No matter how much I want to, I can't go home. But why? Whatever you did has long ago been forgotten and forgiven. Elena, it is not that simple. <laughs> well, then, I'll stay here. I'll stay here or anywhere. We can start a new life together in a new country. You would give up your family, your rank for me? Of course. A penniless man? <laughs> you don't know what you're saying, Elena. Are you not penniless? Do you have these? They're my gift to you. It's enough. It's more than enough for a new start anywhere. It's too late, Elena. No matter how much I want, it cannot be. Not here, not anywhere. you do love me. Yes. In spite of what I thought you did. I guess I've always loved you. Well, then it can be. You have news of Alexis? Yes, Countess. Bad news. The, uh, the man that we, we found here last night, he apparently was part of a gang. They have Alexis and they want your jewels. Or... Oh, they'll, they'll kill him? Yes, Your Highness. Oh, give them the jewels. 
How are they to be delivered? One man rides out alone at moonrise. He rides straight east until he stops. If he's followed, the Count will be killed. I am your messenger. I'm afraid not. The Count's safety is my responsibility. But it is my fault if it hadn't been for that foolish game of fox and hounds. Sorry, it's my job. You gave me the jewels, Elena. Tell them that. With all my heart and all my love, I ask that I be the messenger. It's Vladi's wish. And it's mine. Moonrise in an hour. I shall be ready. Good luck. Thank you. Hurry back, Vladi, please. Until I see you next, remember that I love you. They say they'll release the Count when they get the jewels. Outlaws promise. Harder to be counted on. My sons and I know this country probably better than anyone else. I think we could track Prince Vladi without being seen. I suggest you do it, then. Yeah. Horses saddling and horses now. Moon's been up an hour. Where is he? You don't hear too good. He's riding in now. All right, scatter. You're late, Prince. Chest on the ground and step back. Not till you cut him loose. No. He stays tied. Three guns say he stays tied. Three guns. So you finally talked them around to your side, hmm? We decided we could use your share. Now, Prince, put the chest on the ground and step back. Let's get out of here.
to be nice. I wish Elena did not have some love. She won't. Thank you very much. Ben, thank you for everything. It's a bit to have you here. I uh, hope you have a safe journey back. And give your father my very best regards. Tell him I'd like to see him. Move out! 